Hello, everyone, and good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us for another one of our live webinars hosted here at UC Merced. My name is Ricky Hill, and I am your e-recruiter. I'm always so thrilled to be here with you to host and moderate these fun online events. Before we get started, let me just give you a quick reminder of that QR code that you'll see on your screen. Go ahead and give that a quick scan with your smartphone. It'll take you over to a special website with an exclusive link to our episode of the college tour. Now that episode does feature 10 of our current students and they are able to give you more information and insight about our campus and why they decided to become a part of the Bobcat family. So don't miss out on that great opportunity. All right, well, tonight we know we have a very special audience of parents and guardians. Hopefully some of your students may be with you as well. But as I said, we are so thrilled to be welcoming this very special audience of parents and guardians. And tonight we will be talking about the role that you play in your student's journey. So once again, a big welcome to you. Let's go ahead and give you a quick overview. And so we'll be doing a quick welcome for you. And then we will be discussing the seven key aspects of what your role will be in your student's journey. We also have an opportunity for you at the end for a live question and answer session. And speaking of that, don't forget to send in your questions by clicking the Q&A button in the lower portion of your screen. Once again, my name is Ricky Hill. I am your e-recruiter. At this time, I would love to welcome on my colleague and friend, Juan. Hello, everyone. Welcome, parents and guardians, uh, to today's webinar. Uh, first of all, congratulations are in order. As you are an integral part of the success of your scholars, your support, guidance, and encouragement play a vital role in, in shaping their educational journey. Thank you for all you do. Uh, so I am thrilled to be here today. My name is Juan Villegas. I'm privileged of serving as the Associate Director of Admissions. And in this role, I'm responsible of recruiting exceptional students from around the globe with an especial focus, of course, in California. It is an incredible, rewarding position that allows me the uh, allows me to connect with bright, ambitious individuals and help them embark in their academic journey. I am very excited to share insights and information with you all during today's webinar. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive in. Let's dive in. So today's webinar, I would like to share with you not only what is your role as parents and guardians in the life of the uh, student or the scholar? But also, I'll be able to provide what kind of services we have at the University of California, Merced, that will be assisting you in making sure that the scholars receive that kind of assistance. So one of the very first ones that I would like to point out is the emotional support. Transition into university life can be overwhelming for many students. Parents and guardians can provide emotional support by being able to listen, offer advice, and provide encouragement during times of stress and homesickness. Uh, one of the very first things that I would like to uh, discuss with you is about you know, homesickness, especially once the scholars lead to higher education. Probably many of you have scholars that are that might leave more than an hour from our campus. And sometimes, you know, there is numerous factors such as, you know, individual circumstances, the support system in place, and, and in our specific institution. However, homesickness is a common and challenge that many students face during the transition to college or university life, especially if they're, once again, like I said, even if they're attending a school that is far away from home for the very first time. Research and anecdotal evidence suggests that homesickness can contribute to some students deciding to leave higher education prematurely. So students have shown that homesickness can impact academic performance, emotional well-being, and overall adjustment to college life. So it is always welcome that you call your students, that you call them and make sure how they're doing. You know, you could do that, uh, you know, once in a while. Uh, uh, there is a couple of research that shows that uh, in the past, we thought that parents and guardians who were categorized as uh, helicopter guardians or scholars 
were not that good for students. However, nowadays, there is even more research, especially from some of our professors at UC Merced, that actually say that uh, parents who are interested or who get involved in their students' life, but once again, with freedom, meaning you don't take the lead, you basically lead them uh, and leaving them with uh, the option to make choices, that's actually a very good balance. So with that being said, it, uh, that's the kind of role that you as a parent and guardian can play in the scholar's life. You know, getting in touch with them once in a while, making sure that they're safe. Once again, it's not just because of the student's well-being. Well, that's the primary thing, is that the student is, is well. But the other thing is, because we want to make sure that they are taking advantage of them being in a university of California, a research institution like ours. Well, isn't precise uh, statistics on the number of students who leave higher education, specifically to do, uh, you know, because of homesickness, it is recognized as a significant issue that institutions all, often address through various support services, counseling resources, programs aimed at helping students overcome feelings of homesickness, and successfully adapting to the new environment. So many of the things that we will be discussing here today will show you some of the services we provide. Once again, this is not a all-inclusive list, but this is a list of some of the uh, services that we highly recommend for your student scholars to be aware of, and you as a parent, because once again, these services are here for you as a parent or guardian to make sure that your scholar is fine. One of the very first ones is, of course, the student accessibility services. And that's so you can let us know way ahead of time if we need to make sure or know if your student, your scholar will be needing uh, any kind of uh, uh, assistance with accessibility services. The other one is, you know, we have our own health and athletic center. Uh, we have our own health and um, uh, counseling services, which is located right at the entrance. Uh, as you enter the university, right on the very first row, you will see on your left hand side as you enter the campus, you will see, uh, and there's a picture of the building. And in the second floor, that's where we have our doctors, but we also have our psychologists or our counselors. And once again, I said that, you know, it is not bad. And we uh -huh. try at UC Merced, uh -huh. make sure that everyone has uh, 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 access to those services because we want to make sure that students know that, that it is okay to need those services. In fact, we encourage them to uh, access their services. Right now, you know, some of the conditions that are, uh, uh, that they can assist with is, of course, you know, prevention visits, anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, bipolar condition, schizophrenic spectrum adjustment, substance use, eating disorders, even navigating through relationships or any academic difficulties or even insomnia. Once again, students don't have to have all any of this, even if they just say, you know what, I, I just need to go and talk to someone other than their friends, they're more than welcome to attend. You know, they're open 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And we also have a uh, after hours prices line. Once again, everyone is very welcoming, but we still want to make sure that parents, guardians, and the scholars know that those services are there for them. So you don't have to worry about if we have insurance, if we have the UC Merced insurance, as long as they're students, they can access those uh, uh, services as well. So once again, the very number one key will be, you know, you need to encourage them, you know, to uh, seek those kind of assistance, that help, and, you know, you're supporting them in their uh, emotional support. So that will be one of the very first uh, keys 
that uh, we need for you to assist us now that your student may be thinking of coming to UC Merced, or probably they have already said that they're coming to UC Merced, which will make us very happy. And that will be great because we, I think we will be ready for them. That very next thing that I would like to show you is that we have great news. And the great news is, if we can go to that next slide, is that we're pleased to announce that the financial aid information you have been eagerly awaiting is now available on your students' portal. So if they have not accessed that portal for a few days, they might not even know that the financial aid information is already available. Remember, this is a very comprehensive resource that provides details uh, into various financial aid uh, options available to the scholars, ensuring that they have the support that they need in order to, of course, to pursue their academic goals. So you need to take some time to explore the portal and familiarize yourself with the opportunities available. And remember that we have a very dedicated team that is here to assist you in every step of the way. Do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or need any further guidance. We have our own financial aid office that will be able to assist you. In case that you don't see any financial aid package yet, it might be that your student still haven't put UC Merced as a school that they are attending. So make sure that that is done. Also, sometimes the students get uh, uh, chosen to be verified or they need to have some kind of verifications make sure that we go through all of that because we want to make sure that you are sure about what is the financial aid situation of your scholar before or even before you need to make a decision. So the next thing that is being shown to you is how the award letter will look like. The award letter will have uh, some of the information as to how much are they receiving from the federal, federal government if they qualify for, how many uh, uh, money they're getting from the state of California if they apply for, and also how much money they're getting from our own institution, from the University of California Merced, if they qualify for. And also remember, now that the, the federal government, the state and an institution have put some, some money, you know, it is time also, and, and uh, you know, what we call for the self-help. Self -help. And that's where we say how much the parents will have to contribute or how much is the students have to contribute into their education. So once again, the award letter sometimes can be a little bit of a, you know, overwhelming for some parents or some students, especially if this is your first time. But once again, do not be worried and you should be able to know that we will make our best effort in order to make sure that you understand what the financial uh, award letter says. So this award letter is available once again on the student's portal. It may not come uh, by mail. And even if it comes by mail, it is not the last uh, or, or the, uh, the last thing that you will hear from financial aid since there's a couple of things that may change. What if something happened and the FAFSA didn't receive the proper information? Let's say that I had a parent, for example, who unfortunately, you know, one of the incomes was no longer available, but two years ago it was. Well, don't worry because, you know, you can always go ahead and do an appeal with the financial aid office and they will be able to assist you with that. That means that even if two years ago there were two incomes in the family and now there's only one, in the appeal, we will be able to say that as well and they will take that into account. My recommendation here for you as a guardian, as a, as a parent, is to make sure that your scholar is on top of everything that is being asked from them or from you as the guardian of the scholar. I mean, the guardian of the scholar. So make sure that they uh, take the time to review everything that they have to do in order to have the most accurate financial aid package. And remember, the cost or the tuition and fees are not going to go up 
as long as they stay in good standing and for the next four years. Or oh, especially for some students who especially do engineering, they might have to stay, you know, for about five years. Uh, so that's basically the second uh, thing that parents and guardians should stay, you know, uh, aware of is the financial aid component. If something were to happen to the student and, you know, something happened with the family, you know, we have emergency funds that can be requested. I had one day a student who, you know, unfortunately the family was going through a very hard time and, you know, in the mid of the semester, that's not an excuse, you know, or even a reason for the students to drop out out of the school. Basically, once again, is they have to reach out because by doing that, you might learn that there are so many other opportunities. Like I said, some students have come to us and we are able to guide them through what we call the emergency funds that some programs may have. So that will be great. So if you're not able, we are going to have Babka Day on Saturday. And if you have some documents to turn it in, that will be always, uh, you know, great for you to bring everything in. And if they're not, if you're not able to come to campus, you know, uh, during the weekend, then you could always look at our website, and you might be able to find some of our admissions advisors that might be able to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you, so that they can go over uh, your special circumstance. Once again, we're not the office of financial aid, but we can definitely guide you and let you know who your next best contact would be if you are not able to address your concern. Once again, because it is one of the roles that you are playing. You know, I know that your scholar is no longer a three-year-old, that all they had to do was cry or ask for it. You know, you're teaching your scholar now to be responsible. So remember, and whenever they have a financial need, they can always seek the help. But at the end, there is something else that we have at our campus when it comes to financial aid or any financial assistance. And the next slide actually shows you that we have something called jobs as well. So it encourage the student, especially if they're afraid or they never have hold the job, you know, apply. Go to jobs.ucmerced.edu and have them experience what is it to go and start applying? What is it to go and do an interview? And not only because we want them to work, I mean, we have many, many jobs on campus, but it's also a learning opportunity for the student. Like I said, what does it feel like, you know, being a uh, applicant? What does it feel like if you get called to do an interview? But also what does it feel like if they said not, now but you know keep trying you know they have to uh come you know have this kind of experiences and they will have it in real world uh, as we are doing it in the university of california as well so with that being said now i want to go to a third key that uh we need for you as a parent or we need for you to know that we have here on our campus. Then the, this third key role that you play is as academic support. While the scholars are ultimately responsible for their academic success, parents and guardians can encourage good habits, any you know, time management skills, academic goal setting. They can also, you can also provide them with uh, guidance on choosing courses, especially if you know a little bit, if this is not your first, you know, kid that goes to campus, sometimes you may know a little bit and you might be able to assist them. But of course we have advisors about majors, you know, having a major that it doesn't mean anything in terms of career. You could major in psychology and still be, you know, an attorney, being a doctor, something like that. So. Once again, you could help them distinguish that. And also, if you know the resources we have here on campus, you could always encourage them. 
sometimes they might come to you and say, you know, I have doubts about my major. I, I don't think I like it no more. You know, do not punish them because, you know, the average uh, amount of times that students change their major, sometimes uh, the average is about three times, in, you know, in their undergraduate. And there might be some other publications that sometimes, you know, um, that might be even go higher. So once again, academic support is what you can provide or encourage them. You know your kid. You know that person because you have spent more time with them than we have. You know, they're barely coming to us. And remember, at the University of California, we promised to love your kid for four years. And after that, we won them out of our campus with a degree and go and pursue a master and a PhD. Now, if they end up staying at UC Merced for a PhD, we will extend our love for additional years. We will care for them, you know, and we care for them all the life. I was just making, you know, the emphasis that we want to make sure that they are successful. But here it is the thing. How can you advise the students on the services if you don't know what kind of services we have? Well, the next slide will have a, some of the services that we have at UC Merced. We have transfer returning and better end services. Another thing that is vital is that the students who come to UC Merced, they should never be homeless or be hungry. So we have a basic need services. Imagine if your student lives off campus and at one time they are short on cash because they did something or because they miscalculated. They should never be hungry. They should come to the basic needs services. And we have a food pantry that they might be able to do their grocery, almost like if they were doing grocery shopping with the exception that they don't have to pay anything for the food that they get up there. We have the FIA Locks program also for scholars that you know get um, invited to that specific program. We have mentors program. We have the guardian scholars. If any of your scholars have been or anyone in the family has been impacted by incarceration in the in here, um, uh, not only in California but just uh, you know generally. We have, like I said, the student uh, health services, the student accessibility services. We have the care, advocacy, and resource education. So if they just want to talk to someone, if they if they just want to bend out, or you know, if they have issues with their roommates on, if they're living on campus, or even if they're living off campus. So once again, any kind of student support that they have, we have a very robust team that will be able to assist your scholar to make sure that they have the services uh, that they need. Once again, remember, this is a joint venture that we are now embarking with, especially if they, once again, if they choose UC Merced. Not only is academic support something that you can encourage them, but at the end is the student who's gonna be, you know, who's gonna be responsible for their academic success. So your encouragement in the services that we provide, and we always are asking students to come in and take a look at the services we have, then that's how we will have a very successful scholars from UC Merced. So the next one I want to uh, point out is that it is very important that you stay in communications with the university. So let me put it this way. Remember that we have something called a federal law called FERPA. So sometimes if you call us and you're asking about your individual student, we may not be able to share any information because they're protected, they're adults. Even though you're paying sometimes the bill, you know, the law prevents us from uh, sharing some information. So the best thing to do is for you to be able to have good communications with your scholar and making sure that they provide or they talk to you about any specific need or anything that they might have. But here is the thing, you could also, you know, subscribe. And I would like for some of my peers to my colleagues 
to put some of these links and we will make this uh, presentation available to you so that you can have the links. So you could subscribe to the parents and family guides. You can get an online version. But if you're here on Babka Day on uh, April the 20th, you may get even a hard copy of the parent and family guide. Also, we have what is called the parent and family engagement newsletter. That one is always offered online. Um, so make sure that you know you subscribe for that. Another thing that we want for you to be able to stay on, on track or on, on top of is that the UCM alert. So now we are always preparing for the worst, hoping that nothing happens. That is the best thing you could do. We're always planning. We're always training for the worst, but hoping and working so that nothing happens. But if you subscribe to the UCM alert system, you sometimes might get some text messages saying there is a smoke on such building. They have to be evacuated and probably someone just burned the popcorns. So you will get those kind of uh, alerts in your phone. So don't get, uh, don't be scared if you receive something from UC Merced. I get those all the times, you know, because someone smells something like gas and now they have to ask people to evacuate a, a specific building. That happens especially during the very first weeks because students are getting familiarized with their dorms. So make sure that, uh, you know, you also subscribe for those alerts and also your scholars should be uh, subscribing to that alert. That's how the, the police department, the campus, lays out, let us know right away if we have an emergency. Sometimes you will get an emergency if you're planning on traveling because it's a long weekend and you're traveling, they might send an alert and say, you know what, be careful. Be careful because we just received word that the weather you're going to Southern California or Northern California or someplace else may not be as desirable. So we get those kind of alerts as well. And it's, it's not overwhelming. It's only messages that are, I will say, necessary. Um, and once again, that's the way for you to keep communications with the campus. The other thing is you could also give us a call. Once again, we might not be able to provide you with the specifics on, a, um, on your student, but we might be able to talk about what it's, you know, <laughs> we can make that uh, and, and, and always reach out. Sometimes we have parents who are worried because they don't know anything about their kids. We cannot discuss if they're even on campus or not, but if you let us know, we will do our due diligence in making sure that the students are actually uh, well as well. So, you know, that's part of the um, uh, communicating with the university. So with that, now I want to go into another role. And I, I apologize if I'm going too fast, but I just want to make sure that I go over all of the seven key roles that I said parents and guardians, but like I said at the like I said at one point, it, we are a team. So I say we as an institution, we are there with you because you know you unfortunately are not able to follow your kids to every single uh, function, but we might be able to be there. So like I said, we are a team. So the next thing is you know encourage the student to be independent. How do they do that? You know, um, one of the things that uh, we have is, you know, we, we have to help them develop their independence and their sense of reliance. Uh, sometimes guardians and, 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 and the parents can support this process by allowing them you know, to make their own decisions, solve problems on their own, and learn from their experiences. I already said about, you know, even getting a job. All you could do is just letting them know how was your experience, but let them, you know, uh, experience what is it to, you know, apply for a job. 
Another thing that we encourage them is to join clubs and organizations, not only because they are being encouraged to be active on campus, because they're doing sometimes volunteer work, because they might get a leadership position, they might be you know, bonding with other students that are in their classes. So that is always, and that's, uh, that is always beneficial for them. Uh, so remember, we have over 200 clubs and organizations. And if, you, if we don't have one, they can always start their own. So make sure that they take a look. And you know, most of the clubs and organizations, they're not just about you know, socializing. Many of them are about their specific majors. Many of them are on their uh, you know, areas of uh, interest or something that they would like to work with. So make sure that you go through uh, some of the clubs and organizations that we have and encourage the scholar to go ahead and take a look at everything we have for them. So another way that you can encourage the student you know, to be independent and self-reliant is by, you know, letting them choose, you know, if they want to change their major, just give them the information, hear it out, what are the pros and cons, you know, and they might be able to get, you know, make a better decision and also get guidance. So make sure that, you know, we get all of that uh, in front of them so that they can make the best decision they can do. So the next one is networking and career development. Why am I talking about that? And you probably, if any of you as a parent or guardian attended some of our uh, admissions receptions, one of the messages that we gave there was that we are prepping the scholars to go and get a good job at the end you know, or probably get their, do their own job. Basically, they can open their own business. So not only, like I said, not only do we prepare students for current careers, but also jobs that do not exist. And like I said, it's because they might be the ones who will be doing those kind of jobs. So if you look on the screen, you know, we actually have, um, uh, many organizations that come to our campus because they want our scholars, your scholars, to participate, to do volunteer work, to do internships, and some of them are paid internships. Uh, and there are some of the companies that come to our campus. It's not, like I said, a full list of all of the companies, just some of the companies that come. Even though we are in the Central Valley, remember, we're not in the middle of nowhere. We're in the middle of everything. So it depends how you look at it. So guardians and parents, you know, you could help your uh, scholar explore career options. I had a student who wanted to be a doctor, and I said, great, you know, go ahead and volunteer. Go ahead and do something, you know, where you are. Uh, in front of patients or in front of people and see how you will handle those situations. After a while, that student came back and said, she didn't want to be in front of patients. She hated patients, that's the exact word she said. And I said, well, it is nice that you find out, but now start thinking about it if you really want to be a, a medical doctor. So at the end, she still ended up doing biological sciences and went into health, but instead she started working in a pharmaceutical company. So still in the medical field, but not necessarily in front of patients. So that's the other good thing about internships and volunteer work. That's why I will encourage you, you know, to keep encouraging your scholar, you know, to seek those career options, you know, to connect with alumni or professionals in their field of interest and seek out internships and, and job opportunities. You can provide them guidance. And if you don't know, that's fine. We have our Career Services Center. Like I said, sometimes all you have to do is let them know, hey, I heard that you have a Career Services Center. You should go to that place because they will help you with resume writing, interview skills, professional networking. And even if an interview is going to be done over dinner, sometimes they even give you some etiquette 
or if uh, you know the interview is gonna be done and you need a you know a suit, then go ahead and and do it. You know we have and we will be able to borrow you some of our suits. So make sure once again that they do the networking and the career development. So now let's go and see what other centers and uh, institutes we have. I'm not gonna go over each of them, but I just wanna make sure that you have and see some of this. I know that the Center for Early uh, Cognition and Language is not just our child care center, but even if you don't utilize it, especially our transfer students who have families, also someone might end up doing some internships there. So uh, make sure that you utilize. You know, this is just a picture uh, because we always say that the research that happens at UC Merced is out of this world. And it is because a lot of the technology and the trivology uh, uh, that was done at UC Merced is now utilized in Mars. So that's always great. So the next one will give you an example of what kind of services are provided by the uh, uh, Center for Career and Professional Development or, or Career Services Center. So that will be the next slide uh, that will give you that information. So they do provide individual coaching, job search assistance, interview preparation, resume help, networking opportunities, digital brand development. And of course, they will do trips to businesses in Silicon Valley, Los Angeles, and San Francisco as well. So make sure that you take uh, advantage of that. They even have a photo book where you could go ahead and take your a professional shot that you could put it in your LinkedIn account uh, as well. So the next thing that I want to discuss is we need to make sure and we all play a role in promoting your scholar safety and well-being because, you know, they're away from home. They're now at the university. And you need to have discussions. We will help you with that. Of course, we have uh, um, uh, many professionals that can assist with that. But sometimes we have to discuss topics like, you know, responsible alcohol consumption. I mean, if you're a minor, you shouldn't be thinking about that. Uh, but if they're over age, you know, still we need to discuss about responsible alcohol consumption, about personal safety and mental health awareness. If they feel unsafe on campus, you know, you could always call our police department. We have our own police department on campus that would be able to assist you. So you could always have that. Um, so anyone, um, um, how can you start creating a, a safety, how you could start creating a well-being? We even have a online community that the students, your scholars can get involved with. Uh, Ricky, would you mind sharing a little bit about our Babka Den? Sure, absolutely. Thanks so much, Juan. And thank you again to everyone who is joining us tonight. We do have a very special social media platform that is called the Bobcat Den. Now you can check with your student or your scholar and see if they have received the email about that. They may have actually received it a couple of times. They do go out on a rolling basis. So they should have received that with more information. And the important thing is the link that they can click on to get themselves signed up and registered for the Bobcat Den. Now, what that is, as I said, is a social media platform specifically designed for the newly admitted student population who will be coming to us in the fall of 2024. So just here in a couple of months, the summer is going to zoom right by. Now, one of the fun things about this platform is that they will be able to communicate with other people just like themselves, newly admitted Bobcats who are coming to UC Merced, maybe from close by, maybe from far away, maybe even from out of state. So what a better way to go ahead and start building that Bobcat community before they're here. Of course, we will also have student ambassadors and professional staff members available at all times who will be able to build those relationships and bonds as well as answering questions. So any type of question you can imagine, maybe you've been attending webinars and maybe you came to a reception and hopefully Bobcat Day this coming Saturday, nine to two. Uh, but if you still have other questions that maybe come up along the way, 
go ahead and hop into the Bobcat Den and ask those questions there. They could range from anything, from academics. It could be majors that we offer, clubs and organizations, performances, athletics. What is it like to live in the dorms? What is social life like here? As my colleague Juan had mentioned, we are not in the middle of nowhere. We are in the middle of everything. Just a short distance away from our day trips to the Bay Area, to the beach, to Yosemite, all of those important things that might be new to your student or to you as a parent, guardian, or supportive family member or friend who is supporting this new scholar who is coming to UC Merced in the fall. So again, it is called the Bobcat Den, a social media platform specially uh, designed for the newly admitted students coming in in the fall. So check those emails. And also while I'm here, I do want to just mention again, Bobcat Day is coming up this Saturday, April 20th. So if you check over in the chat box, I know we've already dropped the link, but we can drop it again for you so that you can get yourself and your scholar registered. If you haven't already, we definitely hope that you come by on Saturday. You will get lots of questions answered, over 200 tabling events. So we mentioned clubs and orgs earlier. Everyone is going to be there. So you'll also get to go to school presentations get to meet faculty, student staff members, fellow Bobcats. I will be there. Everyone else on these wonderful webinar events will be there. So we can't wait to see you. Juan, I will go ahead and toss it back over to you. Thank you very much, Ricky, for that. And, and once again, the reason we have the resource is because we want the scholars to start getting to know people here on campus. So once they come to the campus, they will not feel alone. They will feel like they already know someone. And sometimes your scholars may be lucky enough that they might come and all their friends are coming with them. You know, so that's always great. But, you know, their network, the amount of students that they have that they know will be even bigger. So those are some of the things that, um, you know, we want for you to be able to know of how you can assist your scholars to be successful to make sure that they stay on campus and they do, they're being successful. So make sure that, uh, you know, that you don't have to remember most of the things that I discussed here, as long as you know that we have your back. Once again, we are here as a resource also to you as the guardian, as the parent, to making sure that we provide that scholar a comprehensive, you know, uh, um, um, opportunities of resources that they can take advantage of. Even if they don't want to take advantage of these resources, we can always offer those to them. Um, and we have dedicated teams that are able to assist them in every step of the way. So I know that there's a question and that it asks if, um, you know, if parents will receive any kind of updates on their kids' well-being for the first year. Like I said, FERPA prohibit us from giving a specific information on your student, but here it is the thing. UC Merced is the only University of California campus that have a midterm grade. And even before they actually get a bad grade, we're hoping that none of your scholars do, but we actually are able to intervene and go and ask them, hey, what's happening? What can we do so that you are successful in, 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 in what you're doing? So once again, we are doing this every step of the way. So the best way that a parent can stay up to date on your scholar's well-being, the way that a guardian can stay updated on their scholars well-being for the first year or even any other year is by having a good communication with the student. Sometimes the student may be able to provide us a clearance to discuss some things, you know, so that's something that once again you will need to discuss with the student. But even if there's something that you think that your scholar might be going through, you could always give us a call and and we could not tell you anything about it, but we will be able to take a look on our behalf and see and check on the student as well. So with that being said, I want to thank you for being here today. I just want to make sure that 
you know, you are in the know that you're not on this alone. Yes, those are seven key roles that you as a parent and guardian play on, the, on your scholar's life. But like I said, we are here to support you as well. So now that they're being admitted to UC Merced, if they're coming to UC Merced, like I said, we can create a good team that can stay, you know, uh, as a team that provides assistance to your scholar. So the next thing I want to say is that always remember that we have admitted events and activity. And these are great opportunities for you to be able to get to know the campus yourself and even talk to some of us and, and you know, discuss sometimes some questions that you may have that, uh, you know, that we can address privately. Uh, so that's always great. So the next thing I want to say is always also visit the campus. You know, your first day of class of your scholars shouldn't be the first day that they visit campus. There's many ways for them to actually come and see the campus. One of them, and we keep repeating, is what is coming next, which is Babka Day on November 20th. But you could still come. If you're not able to come this Saturday, you could come any other day of the week. We are open Monday to Sunday, and all you have to do is make an appointment online at your Career Services Center. You have until the May 15th, if you're a first-time student, to submit your SIR, which is the student intent to register, which is a way for you, along with the scholar, to say, yes, I'm going to UC Merced. So once again, one of the things that I want to mention is financial aid information is already available. Now, if I have some parents that are who's, uh, or guardians whose scholars have uh, been admitted to UC Merced through a special program called Bright Beginnings, we might have to wait just a few more days before financial aid is available to you. Once again, we encourage you to still go through your FAFSA and try to make a correction and add UC Merced into your FAFSA. Uh, so with that being said, now we will go for questions. And um, let's see if we have any questions. Yes, thank you so much, Juan, for that very information-packed presentation tonight. And this is the great opportunity for everyone who is on with us this evening to go ahead and send in your question if you haven't already. Go ahead and click on that Q&A button. A little box will come up. You can send that in to us, and we will take a peek at those right now. And speaking of, let me go ahead and see what we have coming in. I know that we have been getting to quite a few of those behind the scenes as well. Let's take a look here. So we do have some questions about scholarships. So there's some folks asking about external scholarships and internal scholarships and how they know when to apply. So for scholarships, of course, you know, for our institutional scholarships, all you have to do is apply either to FAFSA or CADA. And once we get that information, our financial aid office will be able to uh, package you. That's if you're coming as a first year student. Now, once you're on campus, we definitely have the office uh, uh, in financial aid, because remember the name is financial aid and scholarships, that will be able to assist you in trying to get outside the scholarships. Usually the Bright, uh, 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 the Calvini Bright Success Center, that provides you with assistance to get uh, outside scholarships that are very prestigious scholarships that will be able to assist you. And you will be able to get those through our campus or once again, with the assistance of some of our people on our campus once you are going from your first year to your second year. Now, if you're coming to your first year, just for UC Merced, all you have to do is pop sign CATA. Now, in your own high school, so your community college, you can always, always go and talk to your uh, financial aid office or the career services centers they have because they usually have 
also uh, information about scholarships that they might have. So that's uh, another way for you to do that. Perfect, thanks so much, Juan. And then I do see a couple of questions have come in about academic support for students who may have some type of learning disability or need some type of special accommodation. Can we go ahead and drop into the chat box? I know that we do have an accessibility office so we can give the contact information there. But Juan, would you happen to have any additional information? Yes, so if your student still is in high school, make sure you get your four or five plan Make sure that you get all of the um, uh, certifications that they need. That way they can bring it to our campus and we will and you will be able, along with the scholar, to meet with our office and they will be able to assess and say what kind of assistance do they need. So once again, and the reason I'm saying is because by law, the University of California we are mandated to work with you when it comes to accessibility services. Now, we're not mandated, therefore, there might be a charge if your student, your scholar, need to be assessed. So our, uh, our counseling services, they, they're providing those kind of services for no cost, but once again, is because they do an awesome job. But if they can get it, right now that they're in high school because the high schools will pay for it if you're in a public high school make sure you do that but yes we do have services and we can discuss that further if you know um, if you talk to one of our uh, admissions advisors perfect and again just go ahead and check over into that chat box we did drop some contact information for you so anyone that is interested in that this is your your good chance here to go ahead and take a screenshot or click on the links and jot down some contact info there all right, the next question has to do with Bobcat Day. It is one of our favorite topics. It's the biggest day of the spring for us at UC Merced. So we had some listeners that are asking, are prospective students and their parents allowed to attend Bobcat Day? Or do they have to be people who have already been admitted? No, actually, that's a like an open house. It's our biggest open house. So if you've been admitted, we will be delighted to see you on campus. We will be so happy to say welcome. But even if you're just looking, and even if you are underclassmen, you're a sophomore, you're a junior, anyone, or you want to bring family, friends, neighbors, the grandma, the, everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome on that day on campus. Any day, but you know, especially on that day, because everyone is on campus and everyone will be there to greet you. Yes, I highly recommend that you guys come. This will be my 10th year attending a Bobcat Day. We do them once a year. It is so much fun. So we did have a slide on that earlier, and we will touch on that again here in just a few minutes. But definitely, it is a great time to come. You'll get to meet everybody. As I said earlier, two, over 200 tabling events, performances. Our chancellor will be giving a warm welcome to everyone in the very beginning. So you definitely want to attend, even if you're a prospective student, even if you're not at that place yet, to actually be joining us in the fall. It's a great introduction. All right, the next question we've got here, let's take a look. Oh, so I do wanna mention last night we did have a webinar that was in particular, it was focused on housing and dining and transportation services. And there was a question that came in that was asking about how to get from the Bay Area to UC Merced using Amtrak. So that recording will be posted either later tonight or in the morning. So if you'd like to do an instant replay, they do talk about that. But if one of my behind the scenes friends can go ahead and drop the contact information for our TAPS office, that's the transportation Transportation and Parking Services Department, they would also be able to answer some of those questions for you as well. But we do have access to a bus system. There's also a small airport here in Merced, as well as a local Amtrak station. So that is a valid way for you guys to get around if you're coming from that area. All right, let's see what else we have here. And oh, so this is a good one too, about the SIR deadline of May 15th. So we have someone asking if they can, for whatever reason, if they don't submit that SIR by the 15th, is there a late opportunity for them to do that? Well, we would love for you to do the May 15th, but if you have a specific case, you let us know. Once again, I'm not gonna say yes, because that might not be the case, but if you approached us, remember, Sometimes you think that the Office of Admission is, you know, <laughs> so high or someplace. No, we are there to assist you. So just reach out to us 
you could do send that on an email to admissions at ucmerced.edu and we will be able to assist you with that. If you have any requests, we we will tell you a year or nay, or you know, we might ask more questions. But once again, it will be on a case by case. But preferably, I will say for the majority, we want the May 15, you know, as a deadline. But like I said, if you have a case where you need assistance, you let us know. We are here to assist. Definitely. Let, thank you so much, Juan. And I'd like to go ahead and allow you some time here if you'd like to give some closing words before I go over the contact slide. So come to Merced. I would love to see you there. I know there was a question about Summer Bridge Program. Yes, financial aid will cover that. And your student can start even earlier. So if you love so much UC Merced, why not start in June or July? So with that being said, I will be in Bobcat Day, and if I see some of you, it will be a pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for attending today. Thank you so much, Juan, again, for that wonderful presentation and for everyone behind the scenes. But most importantly, to our very special audience tonight, we love hosting these events for the parents, the guardians, the family, the friends, everyone who is supporting a student or a scholar to become a Bobcat at UC Merced. Now, on your screen now, you do see some great contact info. I promise you that you will not regret if you grab your smartphone and take a quick screenshot so that you can reference that information later on. Of course, I did mention earlier about the Bobcat Den, so check your emails for that or have your scholar do so. That is a social media platform specifically designed for newly admitted students. But as you see on the screen, we also have the more more traditional social media platforms. So we have Facebook, Twitter, actually it's known as X now. Also we have Instagram, we have TikTok as well as a YouTube channel. And of course, if you have any requests to watch some of the previous webinars, if you hop over to the admitted page that has all of our events listed, as we get those put up, they will have links there to the on-demand instant replays. I know that was a question earlier on. That's the same place, by the way, that you also RSVP and get registered for future events, not only virtual, but in person, including Bobcat Day. So speaking of Bobcat Day, one more quick reminder. I know we've mentioned it a few times. If you can't tell, we're really excited about that day. It is coming up in just another day or so on Saturday, April 20th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. I've already mentioned a few of the things, but just don't forget our chancellor will be there. He will be giving a very warm welcome starting at 9 a.m. sharp. And then from that point on, the day is yours to explore campus, campus tours, housing tours, performances happening throughout the day. And of course, that statement of intent to register is also something that you can take care of in person with us there. We would love nothing more than to celebrate with you, your student, your scholar, the family, the friends, everyone that is there to support the new Bobcat that is with you. Once again, my name is Ricky Hill. I am the e-recruiter here. If I haven't seen you yet, then it's very much a, my pleasure to meet you here, but I definitely hope to see you with your scholar this weekend on Saturday, April 20th at Bobcat Day. Thank you so much for joining us. We have many more events on deck for you. So if we don't see you this Saturday, I hope to see you again, either virtually or in person, maybe on a campus tour. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Have a great night.